So I'm here at the Film Fest Hamburg, and with me is Celine Siama, the director of uh, Portrait of a Lady of Fire. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, thank you for a marvelous film. I enjoyed it so much, to be honest. But, but to be honest, I'm usually not a fan of uh, period dramas, but this one just completely blew me away. So how did you come up with this story? Well, it was a long process, I must say, a uh, process that took years, um, especially because I wanted to uh, to go against some of the convention of the period piece and um, and to come up also with an original story. Uh, you know, it's not the adaptation of a book, it's not even the, 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 the portraying of somebody who actually exists. We invented the storyline and we also invented the character. Uh, this woman painter uh, was at the center of the film, uh, didn't exist, but I worked a lot <laughs> on the uh, research and, and, and also um, crafting this character so that she would actually uh, be emblematic and true and not anachronic at all uh, to all these women painters who were working at the time. Um, since it's fictional, um, um, are there some personal aspects in the story? Yes, of course, I think the movie is really, really intimate. It talks about painting and it talks about uh, what it's like to portray somebody and, 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 and the, 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 the relationship between the artist and the model. And of course, this talks a lot about cinema. <laughs> and uh, at the center of the film, there is uh, Adèle Enel, which has been working with her and having this long relationship with her within years. And uh, this is also, of course, um, uh, I don't know, I can't say a tribute but uh, um, it talks a lot about collaboration and, and how we make cinema. When telling a story uh, out of a specific period in time, um, it must be tricky to get every detail right. Um, how did you research for the film? Well, I did a lot of research by, by myself at first, um, uh, reading a lot, uh, going through archives on the internet. Uh, it could be the body of work of these hundred of uh, women painter, um, or, or it could also be archive from the, the, the critics at the time, uh, where uh, you know reviewing the paintings. There was also a strong um, feminine art critic scene, feminist even, um, and also work with a sociologist of the art, who is specialist of that particular. Uh, moment in art history because there was a very flourishing scene regarding women artists um, so that there would really be no anachronism and you know cinema is about also a collective so the costume designer and the set decorator they work also uh, you know by themselves and and we we make the choices of what we were going to put in the frame and um, you know regarding the period piece this is this is all very very strong decision uh, whether you you go for the silky dress or a more strong uh, material if you if you accessorize it a lot and you know the, the movie is very has this very clear line um, very how, how do, it's not it's not mundane it's not uh, versailles it's really um, uh, simple in a way, uh, and, I, and we worked a lot of, about what we, we were not going to put in the frame also. Um, your leading roles, Adele Enel and Naomi Melon, they're just so brilliant. Mm -hmm. Did you have them, have them in mind when you were writing the script? I had Adele Enel in mind when I was writing the script. It was part of the desire of the, of the project to, to work with her again. Um, so the part was written with her in mind, uh, with everything that I knew and that we all know about her, but also um, like a new partition for her to to create something new, like a new face of herself. Um, and Noemi Merlan, I didn't know her. I really wanted, as, as I was going to um, look at somebody that I know very well, wanted to discover somebody. Um, I had, I had an, she's been in the business for several years, but I hadn't had the chance to actually meet her work. Um, but um, I met her through a, a casting process, and uh, when I put the two of them in the frame, it was obvious that this was a cinematic duo. The way you put the landscape on screen uh, is really outstanding and it looks like a painting itself. Mm -hmm. um, did you develop the look together with your cinematographer, Claire Macron, or whose idea was it? 
Well, from from this from the start, I really wanted to have the ocean, um, to have those cliffs, which is like a very French. Uh, it's Brittany. It's very French, but it's also not French. It's also about this um, romantic imaginary. Uh, so it's pretty much very very European, I must say. Um, and we talked a lot with Claire Maton, the cinematographer, about how we were gonna. Um, shoot those landscape um, and you know we didn't talk about painting that much but uh, regarding the frames but I think we asked ourselves the question of the painter uh, which is about light direction and and what where do you put the character in the frame and and the fact that the screen of cinema will be the future canva um, and we really wanted to we were talking a lot about beauty we really wanted to make it beautiful but not in the style of, it would have to be the style of the film. So that was, yeah, we, took, we talked a lot. And also the lightning um, was a big part of the process of making the film. We, there was a lot of time devoted to that, which is a strong choice because it's a time that you're not gonna devote, gonna devote to something else. But you know, our two stars are really such great actresses that we did, uh, it was a good hierarchy. Um, your previous films mostly dealt with the society and everything surrounding it. Mm -hmm. um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the first time you you were dealing with love as a as a main subject. Uh, what was the reason for that? Well, I wanted to deal with love as the main subject. I wanted to have a film with a love story at its center. And two things about this: I mean, I wanted to have this really patient chronicle of desire rising and love being born and wanted also to have this other timeline that is the memory of a love story the movie is kind of a big flashback and so we have both we have this um yeah this love this present time of the love story and we also have this philosophy this dynamic this poetic of love throughout time and yeah it was the first time and the first time that i actually also was looking at grown-up ca character so not a love or desire that actually makes you discover yourself, but a love that makes you discover the other and, and the concept of love. Mm. When creating the uh, character of the painter, um, did you have a real painter in mind, or did you build that character from the scratch? I had hundreds of, of, uh, of um, how, how can I say, um, I studied the, the lives of, of, the, of these women but actually wanted to invent one that would be true to all of them. Um, so she, she didn't exist, but she actually exists, you know. <laughs> um, but I didn't, also I wanted to create her style of painting, didn't want to take the body of work of one of them, didn't want to go through that biopic, you know, style where it's all about the destiny of one person. So. That's also why we invented that character. Mm -hmm. The film comes out here in Germany on October 31st. Uh, what is your hope the audience will walk away with after watching the film? <coughs> I'm, I'm always trying to make a film as it, that could be the f somebody's favorite film. And that means, what is somebody's favorite film? I think it's a film that you carry with you, that you still want to live in. You know, you're not leaving the film in the room. And I think also what I want people to to have with them is themselves. I mean, their own, I think this, especially when you're making a film about love, I, I think people should leave the room with their own love stories being, I don't know, at peace with their memories. Mm -hmm. Uh, most films that deal with love often rely on the soundtrack. Um, what was the reason for you to almost use no sound soundtrack at all? Well, it was really a, um, a reflection, a, th a thought around the period piece, actually. It was a matter of reconstitution. I, those characters, they are longing for beauty. They are longing for heart. Um, but they, they, it's not available. So they're frustrated. You know, you can't listen to music. If you find a book, you, you will read it ten times. Uh, and I wanted to put the audience in the same position of, because, you know, 
we can we have access we, we are living this moment where we have access to, to beauty really really easily it's in our pockets you know if you want to listen to any music you can um, so I wanted yeah the, the audience to be equals with the character you know equality is a big is at stake here in this film um, so that when music or beauty uh, art is experienced by the characters you experience you experience it as strongly. You're being honoured here at the Film Fest Hammer with, uh, with your own little re retrospective. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your first reaction when you heard about it? Oh, I can die. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, actually I was glad. I think it's always, you know, it's, it's, I'm always very touched when um, festivals uh, actually commit to the present. I think it's you know, festival should be about contemporary, uh, and it's really a strong act of love and politics to actually be enthusiastic about the present. So you know, I'm young, and I'm glad that I could have this already retrospective look on my work because you know it's also political, of course. Indeed. What about the future? Is there anything you can already talk about? What's coming next? I really don't know. I've never had this next step in my mind until the movie is kind of out there in the world so it's just been released in France it's going to be released here and I will you know when it's part of the job to actually you put some news in the world and you have to it's, it's a dialogue so I guess I will know what I will do next when this dialogue is done I'm pretty sure everyone will love the film as much as I did <laughs> all of my colleagues did um, so thank you very much for the interview good luck with the film and it was really nice having you here thank you thank you